Hi and welcome everyone. Thanks for taking the time to stop by to check out my channel. What we are looking at now is Orion's Belt. The three on the bottom, Beetlejuice, top left at the back. We're talking about stars today. Uh, not just stars, we're talking about in particular the constellation of Virgo. Why is there a big talk about the constellation of Virgo and as Secure Team 10, Tyler, so gratefully showed us that there is a problem on Google Sky seeing the Virgo something seems to be blocked out I've taken a photo recently and these are all recent photos of two and a half to three weeks ago the constellation of Virgo now we're talking about a constellation that has many galaxies inside of it we're talking about galaxy clusters it's infested with galaxies and some galaxies as you will see in this video are close to one another we're going to talk about what happens when galaxies and or spiraling galaxies collide and well what we are seeing of course are many different types of stars so that you all know and get a basic idea for those who don't know and a couple of you have actually asked me and I, I always skip over it what is the meaning of different colored stars? And, oh, by the way, very interesting, green stars. They say we can't see them. Why, again? Because of the spectral of the light, the luminosity. Our eyes cannot see it. We'll see a white light back. Green stars do exist. What are the meanings of the colors? A red supergiant is developed from often a dim star, actually, and what happens is the dim stars over time, the inside of the core of the star develops heavier elements. And what happens with those elements, it expands outwards in hydrogen. And what happens after that is a super massive red supergiant that's expanding in helium, expanding, 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 preparing for a supernova explosion. But... Again, like I said, that phase can last many, many billions of years, trillions of years, who knows? And if the stars implode inwards, they could form black holes. These are amazing, amazing things. So a blue star is massive. So basically, the luminosity and surface temperatures are all based on the sizes, guys. If a star is extremely massive, it's going to be blue. It's not going to be red if it's the heat, okay, for Kelvin-wise. I'll give you a real good idea. If it's a blue star, it's anywhere from 50,000 Kelvins up into the almost 100,000 Kelvins. A red star could be 3,000 to 3,700. Then you have the yellow stars can go up 11,000, maybe 15,000, 20,000. It's all by rated that way, and it goes by the color. And... The color is based on the size. So the bigger it is, the more bluish it will be. The smaller it is, the, uh, the more red it will be. And as for the classification of the stars, guys, it goes from um, O, type O stars, to M. So O, B, A, F, G, K, M, to remember the types of different... Um, classifications of the stars and of course it goes in the order from hot to cold so zero being hot and m being very cold and when we say very cold we're talking 3000 to 4000 degrees kelvin like a massive red supergiant like maybe Beetle, beetlejuice for example which is on the verge maybe in a million years i believe that they say that beetlejuice will explode into a supernova the most amazing thing when these spiraling galaxies are interacting, or as they call them, mergers, as they merge into one another, it's basically zero chance on a, on a thousand to get a star hit another star. It's, you have zero chance, basically nil. Why? Because stars are so distanced between one another, and... There's a lot of distance between the stars. Yes, the universe is very vast and there are a lot of star clusters, but 
the clusters that we are seeing that look all jumbled together is because imagine how far they are. They are just so, so far away that we are seeing the many, many layers of these stars, clusters, and gases. There's gases, there's dusts, uh, the light, the luminosity, different luminosity coming from different various stars, galaxies, spiraling galaxies. And the constellation of Virgo is absolutely incredible. You've seen the photos here. These are all my photos that I took of the constellation of Virgo. And NASA is looking into that for some reason. Something is going on in the constellation of Virgo. I don't know what it is, but let me tell you, it could be a supernova coming close. I, I possibly believe that, as you'll see some photos later. And or it could be possibly watching the interaction of spiraling galaxies merging into one another. Like I said, they can merge right into one another and spiral right into one another without touching each other. And they just follow through. And... Um, because they're they are just so vast but the gases that are in each of those galaxies as they're crossing paths merging into one another what's going to happen is these gases are going to smash into one another and it's going to be a massive collision it's going to cause hydrogen atoms and it's going to cause stars to be born so stars are not just born in nebulae in the Milky Way and star clusters in various galaxies and constellations, sorry. They are also caused by cataclysmic events. Now, why am I talking about this? Because that's basically what science is doing is people are wondering what they're doing out in deep space. Guys, they're, they're looking at and observing uh, what happens, the Big Bang, they want to know what happened way back for some stupid reason. They want to have the power. They're looking for the power. This is what they're looking for. And once they see how and or what they're looking for, um, by the way, I haven't mentioned those massive blue stars are very heavy and the gases are so dense. So what happens is they are the ones that will often fall out of the dense gas. And when they do, a supernova, a supernova can occur. And or, like I said, they can implode and remain there. And a black hole could be created, which I think and believe that they saw recently in less than a year, I believe, in uh, science. Yeah, and a galaxy, it's made up of... Roughly 100 billion, billion stars, can you imagine? So you'd think that in a head-on collision between two galaxies, there would be countless collisions between these stars, right? Wrong. Facts that in such a collision, probability is zero. It's hard to believe. I know it. But however, now what we observe when we look at galaxies interacting, the reason is that the space between stars and galaxies is not empty. It's full of gas and dust. And that's what I was talking about before, uh, the dangerous interaction of the both of them. This material, once interacting with one another, when the galaxies collide, it can interact gravitationally. The galaxies can pull on the material in the other galaxies and disrupt their morph morphologies. This is also friction between the gas in the colliding galaxies causing shock waves that can trigger some star formation in the galaxies. These processes can radically affect the galaxies. For example, two spiral galaxies. They can merge to form uh, also an elliptical galaxy. Here, the beautiful top left constellation of Orion. Isn't it beautiful? This is where the birthing stars come out of the nebulae, the nebula, the great nebula of Orion is the old name that many know this area of. Now, look here, we're seeing an x-ray vision. Look at the beautiful cloud over top, and it's what's spinning out, basically, birthing, giving birth to these stars. And these stars are taking off on their own trajectories around various suns and becoming 
whatever galaxies and it's never ending isn't it beautiful this is all my astrophotography and uh, my entire research I've been doing this you know I've only looked at about seven to ten frames of NASA photos aside from what my friends send me maybe 50 60 photos but I'm seeing in myself in my own photos the beauty and these my friends these photos of astrophotography look them up Google NASA photos of constellation of Virgo and you'll see these are authentic photos these are my own photos and they're very similar to the ones of NASA and some of them are even closer and it's scary because Hubble Space Telescope took the photos that are on the, uh, the internet and I was able to get the same closer just as clear as Hubble Telescope now of course Hubble can get much better photos but they're not showing us and what I'm showing you is even better than what NASA is showing so imagine what they can do this is what I'm trying to say it's just unimaginable do you know that the Hubble telescope has hundreds of filters on it that can be changed and it always is filtered and used for example when they show Saturn to be able to see the gas the dust around it etc this is what they uh, do to show the beauty of Saturn etc and uh, several planets but when you look at a raw photo of Saturn you go what the heck is that well it's natural photos